live on your tablet, phone, and the KUTV app. This is 2 News Live. Back in the day. Yes, it is. Thanks for joining us on 2 News Live, live outside of the Delta Center tonight, which will have a new team in town here very shortly. I'm Brian Schnee. It's great to be with you after a historic announcement in Salt Lake City today. Officially official after all the rumors and swirling of all sorts of excitement about the NHL coming to Utah. Well, it's happening. If you'd like to chime in on the show tonight, you can do so by using the hashtag 2 News Live. You can find us on Facebook and X and Instagram and TikTok, wherever you want to relay your thoughts to. You are always very active on social media about pro sports franchises making their move, especially the National Hockey League to Utah. You can also comment on our YouTube live stream, Facebook Live. Very easy to do so. Let's go in depth on this, shall we? After months of speculation, the National Hockey League and the future owners, I guess you can call them owners now, of the NHL franchise here in Utah, they put those rumors to bed by announcing that it's official today. The NHL officially making things really public when it comes to having a hockey franchise here in Utah. Here's how it shakes out. This afternoon, the Board of Governors all approved unanimously to make this happen. And they actually put out some of that on social media today saying, hey, we're going to make this happen. We're still going to be relevant here, but they need to do that within a five-year window to make a new state-of-the-art facility to get a professional hockey team back on Utah, shall we? David James entering the chat. Nice to have you with us here on a windy evening in Salt Lake City. I'm sure you're hearing it on the microphones. We talked about this at about 1.45 this afternoon mm -hmm. when things were official. Right. It looks pretty official. Look behind us. They are putting an <laughs> NHL logo on the building here at the Delta Center. Now that you've had a few hours to process the official announcement, what comes to mind? Uh, this was all a rubber stamp. It was done a long time ago. You don't order up the signage they've got over there. They've got 30 the, minutes in 30 minutes. <laughs> the the uh, the jazz note over there is now uh, colored as if it were a big hockey puck. So this has been going on for a long time, which is what we heard Arizona's head coach said when the team had a 14 game losing streak in late January that went through all of February. He said, we were, we were actually over 500. And then Ryan Smith said, Utah's ready. We're letting the NHL know we're ready. And everybody in Arizona. They Call it Arena. They, they beat the Edmonton Oilers 5-2. Yep. Uh, Oilers five to two. They played the team just a few days prior mm -hmm. in Edmonton. That's when the team mm -hmm. was actually told about what right. was going on. So I do want to ask you, what needs to be done now? You brought up to me a, a few things about practice. where will they practice? Where will they conduct business? Where will all of this take place? Because it's very clear that this is the temporary or maybe permanent with renovation I, home? I thought temporary, a lot more noise is being made about playing here with renovations. I think that requires a massive renovation of the upper uh, level, of the upper bowl. And I'm not really clear how they'll squeeze it into the lower bowl because right now they fold back the seats that you see at the end of the uh, Florida basketball game. Those are all collapsed back. So... If they're going to renovate this, it's going to be a massive project. The other thing is they need a name. And they uh, remember when I was telling you about you, at 145 when we were on breaking in, I said, there are people right now scouring the dark corners of the uh, Internet. Oh, yes. Trying to figure out. The patented names, do you have I them? have the okay. five. They, yeah, that have been filed there for. There are five patented names that have been filed for. <clears throat> the Utah Blizzard, the Utah Fury, uh, the Venom, Hockey Club, and also HC. And... Uh, Ryan Smith, owner of SEG, has been doing national TV interviews and national interviews. Uh, I was watching right before we went on the air. He literally was on one network between 4.45 and 5 and was on a totally different network with the exact same background from 5 to 5.15. He did something on the, the NHL has a dedicated network and he's also on ESPN too. And so uh, one thing in one of the print stories I read prepping for this was that, yeah, I prepped for this, can you believe that? I'm proud of Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it shows. Was that they might go with a temporary name like Hockey Club for a year. Okay, like the Washington football team sort like of thing. Like the Washington football yeah. team did. Because things are moving so fast, there's so many things to do. And he said that's not ideal, but given how much there is to do, that might be the best decision. Well, what he did put to bed today, it's not the Salt Lake City so-and-so. It is the Utah, which he obviously has with the Jazz, right? And that's, He wants that's to market the it. state. He's yeah. been clear about that. Well, they made that clear in the NHL video. If you mm -hmm. notice, the opening shot is of the Red Rocks and is not of Salt Lake City. After three shots, they cut to the Wasatch Front. So they're mm -hmm. making it very clear that 
they're trying to make the NHL a statewide interest and not just a downtown Salt Lake City interest. You mentioned what they would do to this building. I've been trying to get my hands on the application for the revitalization. Now, that's a tough document to get because it is protected. It does have to do with real estate business operations. They denied that request. So, of course, I appealed because that's what I do. And I want that document for all of us to know what they're looking at doing and how they are approaching this or this as we stand here in the general area of the Delta Center. So there's a lot of things that still need to take place at this point. The trend with all sports arenas and, and maybe even beyond that with stadiums is to capture more real estate and to bring more of the commerce around the game inside the arena and to the owner. You're still going to support the neighborhood. That, that's inevitable. But they're trying when they redid this building a few years ago, they cleaned out all the offices. The Jazz had all their offices on the second floor. That's now all dining space, and people eat there pregame. And I wouldn't be surprised if this plaza gets redone again. This entryway behind us is brand new, and it moved the entry out towards the street. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens again. We'll have to see what they do uh, when they revitalize this, if that is the plan. I mean, they've talked about doing a new arena. And for a long time, I thought that's what would happen. And now I have my doubts. As we talk about our final thoughts, Logan, let's pan into what they're doing here on the building. We can step outside as they are preparing the big NHL logo on the outside of the Delta Center. DJ, tomorrow, yeah. Ryan and Ashley Smith and Gary Bettman will be here prior to the conversations to be had here. He will be doing the same thing in Phoenix or in that area with Alex Morello talking about what is the future and what happened with the Arizona Coyotes franchise. What are you expecting to hear tomorrow? Anything new? Any clarification based on the fact that we know the name at this point won't be put out? Well, I think that um, it'll be interesting to see how honest they are in Arizona. The, the problem in Arizona is they've had seven owners over 28 years, and the plan always changes, and they never really execute the plan, and you just can't go sideways for almost 30 years because what happens is that the owners are sharing revenue. The owners don't want to write a check to Phoenix and the players are splitting the revenue. So their salary cap is lower because Phoenix isn't generating enough money. That's the bottom line in Phoenix. Whether they'll be that blunt about it, I'll be interested to see. What I'd really like to hear tomorrow is what's the plan for the arena in the long run. And I don't think we're going to hear that tomorrow. But maybe we will. And I think that's really interesting. Will they build a second arena? Would they keep the Jazz here? Would they move both teams to a new arena? Will they just redo this arena in the offseason? That's a big ask. Sounds like people are interested in the team because they've already been accepting deposits for season ticket holders. The last number I saw was 6,000. Did he update on any of the live interviews he did? I didn't. 6,000 people have spent 100 bucks to say, I want a commitment to season tickets. Right, and the, the arena will be about 12,000. I've, I've seen 11.7, something like that. So somewhere in there, they'll be about. So that's about half full. Assuming those people only buy, you know, one ticket for each deposit. Always good insight. I know yeah. we'll talk again soon. Yep. Thanks for joining us here sure. live on 2 News Live after we broke in for some of our programming today at 145 right. on KUTV 2 News. Let's turn things over to Brian Malahi out and about doing what he does, looking at the angles of revitalization, because that's where he's been at over the last couple of weeks here, focusing on where does this go from here beyond the confines of the Delta Center? What does that application look like? Today's announcement may have some more urgency, a different sense of urgency for the sports entertainment zone downtown. Brian, what'd you find out today? Well, it doesn't pencil out, apparently, is what uh, an economist says, who is the uh, chair of the Weber State University Economics Department. His name is Dr. Gavin Roberts. I talked to him today, and he said studies have been going on with economists over the last 50 years, because that's when this, this uh, paradigm happened, where more and more taxpayer-financed stadiums, arenas were being built. And, and so he says, look, lots of people have had lots of time to study this, smart people. And the studies are consistent that taxpayer financed arenas, and in the case of Salt Lake City, a, uh, an entertainment and sports zone, uh, do not provide positive long-term economic benefits. Uh, they do uh, sometimes have negative economic benefits. Um, and I said, how, how is that even possible when you have construction and new jobs created and, and, and new commerce uh, that floods into an area? He says, look, you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't work long term from an economic point of view. Um, and that is, that is something that I think a lot of people aren't talking about yet. Maybe they will more. I mean, we had a city council hearing uh, earlier this week in which 
there were questions from the city council members to the city attorney about how is this going to work in terms of a billion dollars, up to a billion dollars over 30 years, a half cent sales tax hike. And she said, okay, it's capped at that level. There are designated things that you can spend that money on within the project area. And then after that billion dollars is committed to the project, then, you know, the tax goes away. Well, you know, okay, it's, that's easy to say, perhaps, and that's the way it looks on paper right now and with the new state law that, create, that set this all in motion. But would that actually happen? You know, that's, that's another question. And then the question is, you know, if this is such a good investment, why don't the, uh, the private uh, markets uh, clamor to get into it? Uh, why aren't they financing these projects? Why do so many owners so often tend to lean on the taxpayers for a piece of it. Lots of unanswered questions here. I mean, we're asking the questions, trying to get answers from people like Dr. Roberts who have a lot more expertise in this than we do. Brian, the uh, perfect person to ask those questions, and I know you'll get some of those answers for us. Thanks for joining us once again on 2 News Live to talk about the topic. Let's continue to go in depth on this as we get to a more relatable angle, right? The fan aspect of what's going on here. Introducing Bryce Manick, home in Utah right here. Bryce is a longtime youth hockey coach, also played um, in high school and also at Weber State for a few years and knows a lot of the folks that have come out of Utah and played at the highest level, meaning the NHL. Introducing the penalty box. It's named the penalty box because that's where I spent most of my time when I played hockey, and <laughs> I spent a lot of time here now. So uh, um, me and my wife just envisioned we had an old bar here that we just wanted to do something that we really loved, and she knew hockey was my passion, so we gave my father-in-law an idea, and he ran away with it and, and made us this beautiful bar. So, and then I've got every NHL hockey team in here. Um, you know, I've got the Arizona Coyotes right here. Can't wait to change that out. Um, a lot of these sticks, I've got some sticks from, this is from Minnesota. Uh, Gophers, that's their hockey stick. I've got a lot of sticks from the Grizzly players. You know, we've just collected a lot of these sticks throughout the years. Um, so, and then beautiful NHL logo, so. How long have you had this? Uh, about five years. Cool. That's great. What have you added to it over time? Anything stand out to you here? Yeah, obviously. So I've got, I mean, I've got some hockey sticks up here. I've got some from Mason Manick, Daniel Brickley. Um, this stick over here is actually Trevor Lewis's stick with his picture. I've got um, pictures of me uh, partaking in the parties with Trevor, um, drinking from the cup. You know, I've got the Winter Classic. I, was in, I went to the big house to watch Detroit and Toronto play. Um, I've been to a few NHL final games, the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and National Predators, um, stadium series with Colorado and Detroit. So, uh, I mean, a lot of this memorabilia is from places that I've visited. Feel free to hop behind, too. I see there, I'll hop on this side here. I see the, the O2 stick. That's really cool. Yes, yeah, so this was, uh, my grandpa was, uh, he was actually a German translator for the German hockey team. So they gave them this and then we incorporated it into the bar. This whole bar was basically built around this stick. So we wanted that in there. Um, and then, like I said, I've got, you know, just memorabilia from the Joe Lewis Arena from the last game. I went to uh, game two last year of uh, the Stanley Cup Finals between Vegas and Florida. Um, so, yeah, and I've got a plaque here with me, my brother, my dad, my son. We actually went to the uh, Stadium Series game with Detroit against Colorado. So, That'd be pretty fun to have one here. Yeah, you know, I think Rice Eccles, that stadium would be perfect for a, a classic or stadium series game. What's the hockey drink of choice here at the bar? Ah, uh, kind of apple water. That's mine. That's go to? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Uh, some of the photos here, can you walk me through a couple while, we, while you Absolutely. have them out? So this was my team this year that I coached this year. This is the U16 Lady Grizz, uh, Tier 2, which is double A. Uh, this is taken at our national tournament. Um, and then we've just got, this is a team that I coached, the, uh, the Eagles, this is uh, two years ago. We actually did very well and uh, took fifth in Nationals. Um, you know, and these are just a picture of, uh, this is me, my dad, my brother, and my grandpa. That was from many, many, many moons ago. 
Um, but this was when hockey was such a small market, you know, and, and nobody really knew of hockey in Utah. So, I mean, this is just, just some pictures of, of me and my son. And, you know, this one is from uh, 2009 when my son was a Pee Wee and we went down to, played a lot of games in, uh, in Arizona. Um, before they had, you know, right when they got the Arizona Coyotes, so it, you know, it was fun. These are fun years, fun times. This map over here is really interesting because that map could look different in yeah. a matter of, I don't it's know, right. maybe a few months, well, a maybe a year. We need a star right here for the Delta Center, right? This is where we're going to be. This is where we're going to spend a lot of time. It's right there, and I can't wait to put the sticker on the star there. So, very excited. How special is the penalty box to you, given the what this sport means to you and your family? You know, it's this is this is my place. This is my time. I mean, I a lot of people that have coached or have been involved with in hockey. We, we come here, we hang out, we we watch games, we we just hang out, and I mean, it's a lot of memories we made here. A lot of them, and we talk hockey nonstop. Is there another place like this in the state of Utah you've been you've been privy to? Does anyone else match up here? Absolutely not. In fact, I've this bar is one of a kind. It's on a lot of websites, a lot of social media platforms. I mean, it, it, this bar is pretty famous, and I think, you know, hopefully uh, with the NHL potentially coming here, a lot more people want to come see it. The bar is always open. We'll continue to, of course, follow what happens next with this announcement. The NHL indeed coming to Utah as the Utah something. What will that something be? I'm sure we'll be the ones to tell you all about it, but also... If you'd like to learn more about what's taking place tomorrow, Ryan and Ashley Smith, Gary Bettman, the NFL and HL commissioner, will be talking about this tomorrow at 5 o'clock here at the Delta Center. We have a lot on our website, KUTV.com and the 2 News mobile app, and also on our YouTube channel. Let's get to your weather right now. A little breezy out here. You probably heard it on the microphone throughout the course of the program. Trent Parker, we're talking hockey. Oh, yeah. Right up your alley here. And uh, it's pretty exciting outside the Delta Center. Just seeing logos go up here mm -hmm. representing uh, the big three letters that we've been talking about so much. Yeah, I'm starting to get those butterflies already. I already uh, I might have checked out those deposits. That's a little bit of a secret there. We'll uh, just wait and see how that turns out over the next couple of months. Lows today, it was very chilly, especially as you woke up this morning and headed out the doors into the 30s here across the Wasatch Front, 20s across the Wasatch back southwest Wyoming, 19 degrees in Rock Springs. It is the middle of April, so these temperatures aren't that out of the normal. 57 down in St. George, so a little bit warmer down to the south. Here's a look at Flaming Gorge. Beautiful day up there towards the Manila era area. Temperatures in the upper 40s and a little bit of an east wind. So uh, really nice conditions all across the state, though it is significantly warmer across the southern tier. Out in the east, uh, the Midwest, we've actually, actually got some severe storms. This one complex of storms just continues to trudge to the east out of Missouri towards Illinois now. And you can see all these severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings as well. And then we also have some storms out here towards the Mississippi River Valley drifting eastward, but also uh, focusing in here towards central Texas. We've got this one storm that's pretty uh, tightly wrapped here. A tornado warning for some radar indicated uh, rotation out of that storm headed towards the south. If you're traveling out east over the next couple of days today, the severe weather outlook is really towards the, the Ohio River Valley, Illinois, uh, Indiana as well. And then it shifts southward for tomorrow here across the state of Utah. We've got an interrupting front that's going to keep us out of the 70s. Once we get past the weekend, a little bit of a brief break into the 60s. The 8 to 14 day outlook, though, features those below, norm, below normal temperatures across the southwest as well as above normal precipitation. That takes us through the end of the month. Here in St. George, we've got temperatures in the 80s until potentially Sunday or Monday. We might hit 90 degrees, sunny skies through the rest of the week, and then we're potentially dropping those temperatures back into the 70s as we're watching the potential of a storm system rolling through. Part, partly cloudy skies here in Salt Lake City through the next couple of days. 77 on Sunday before uh, the temperatures drop just a little bit as we head towards Monday, but then we're back into the 70s, well into the 70s, in fact, as we head towards Wednesday and Thursday, and there's that storm on the plus two, potentially bringing us a little bit more rain and temperatures in the 60s. Trent, I know you want to be here at the Delta Center to just feel this excitement of seeing the logos go up. So it's almost like you're here right now, which is good. You know, you get the backdrop. <laughs> Thanks for um, obviously the forecast, but we'll talk more puck here as we make uh, headlines with this announcement. All right, before we go, let's give you one last look at what's going up on the side of the building here at the Delta Center. The NHL proudly stamped here outside of the Delta Center. We'll continue to have this conversation likely tomorrow night right here on 2 News Live after we hear from the NHL commissioner and the new owners of Utah's NHL franchise. Have a great night.